Before we continue our sermon series on um, seeing or hearing God with our eyes, seeing what God wants us to see in His Word, part two, and we've been talking about uh, last week and today we'll be talking about this idea of illumination, and we said that illumination is letting the Holy Spirit uh, show me the meaning of His Word and how it applies to our life. By God's grace, this ancient document from thousands of years ago still amazingly applies to our lives today in 2024. And we've been talking about some of the benefits of the university. Uh, and we want to continue with that thought today with, with the next one, which is I see how God is walking with me. I see how God is walking with me. When God opens my eyes, suddenly I'm able to look back and see how not only is God with me now, He is always in the sea. I just can always see that He is always with me. Now, I don't know exactly what you are all going to Maybe. Feel like you could walk into the world of life by accident. Maybe you feel like you could fight it with God by accident. Maybe you feel like God is a fool of your life. And I desperately want you to know that it is not. Is right there with you. And he has been right there with you all the time. You just can't always see it when you are doing your thing. So, there's a beautiful example of this, one of my favorite um, scriptures to talk on, Luke 24. In Luke 24, it is Resurrection Day. Jesus has risen from the dead. It's the very first Easter Sunday. And believe me when I tell you, there has been a lot happening for 72 hours before the first week of time. Jesus has been betrayed, arrested, beat, tortured. He has been crucified on a cross. He died and was buried and repeated. And understandably, very understandably, all of the disciples were they were devastated. They were dreams of what they thought was to be. They were to be the Man thought he was going to be. Man thought he was going to be. He thought he was going to be. But he's dead. They were going to be. They killed him, and they are probably going to kill him. And so out of fear, all of the disciples flew to Jerusalem where they were. Because nobody understood what's happening. They're confused, they're perplexed, they're grieving, they're afraid, and again, they're afraid because they believe they killed Jesus and he killed them. Again, early that first Easter morning, the women walk to the tomb and they find that the tomb has been broken open. And the body of Jesus is nowhere to be found. I don't know how that there are angels present saying he is risen. He is risen. But this is just too much for these women to understand. It's too overwhelming. So they go rushing back to the disciples who in turn rush back to the tomb and they say, Yes, the tomb is empty. The body is gone. But it's too much for me to understand. It's too much for me to believe. And so, slowly but surely, memory begins to spread all over to reach in the field that Jesus has risen from the field. And while the free rumor is spread, nobody has seen it. To be clear, that very same day, some of Jesus' disciples were walking down the road to a mayor, dead, dead and out. They are getting out of town. They are leaving Jerusalem out of fear for their lives. 
I sometimes there to feel for the time the love experiencing deep. Her walking in that no doubt takes down the third. That is the thing. We need to take thought to kind of show that and start to walk it with them. And I think that's the thing that I think that's the thing. And what's interesting is it's really the thing that God has given us so much to do.
and he did the power of the Lord. I want you to say this, I don't know what you want to do, but I want to be blessed in the name of God for what you want to do. I want to be blessed in the name of God for what you want to do. I want to be blessed in the name of God for what you want to do. I want to be blessed in the name of God for what you want to do. I want to be blessed in the name of God for what you want to do. Just maybe he could not be fast with me to realize that Jesus has been perfect, making people just like me. Jesus has been walking first through your feet, just by faith and trust in the heart of God. Waiting for your grief, he has not been able to comfort the reality that he has never been. Thank you. 
be a man, right? None of us are perfect. Fewer does not mean perfect. Fewer means I'm all caught up on my perfection. There's nothing between my soul and my faith as the next thing. I go to God regularly and I acknowledge failure for the things that I've made today. I say, God, you were right and I was wrong and I'm sorry. I confess that to you and please forgive me. I don't allow the garbage to pile up in my life. Because the of the pure heart is very sweet. So if I'm not here and I'm filling my mind, I'm filling my eyes with junk and garbage, eating junk, reading garbage, and I'm filling my mind with hate, bitterness, and flesh, and resentment, jealousy, that we've been living so much for, I turn to God and I say, God, I could use some God. And it's part of what I'm Less of a pure heart. We said our friends might have a friend, but we also said it's not just friends, but we cleanse our hearts of conscience. I need to just absolutely love it. But we get forward to it. We can't wait for there to be some turmoil. There's some conflict in the workplace and in your marriage. Not one man goes to the hill. First John, to the left. The other hints of water is in the darkness. And he walks around in the darkness. It does not have to be. I just say, that's a pretty straightforward, direct statement, isn't it? So, for some reason, the, the reason they can't find their way around, the reason they don't seem to know where they're going, is because they have unresolved conflict in their lives, which is they can again go wandering in the darkness, kind of a lot. Because we have a hope for the brother in the darkness, what's surrounding the darkness, doesn't know where it's going, because the darkness has to be. So the Bible says you cannot be right with God and great people. You cannot be right with God and wrong with people. You cannot love God and great people. You cannot be reconciled to God and not be reconciled to people. That's what the Bible says if there's conflict between you and someone else, and you come to church and you realize there's unresolved conflict in your heart, the Bible says you lean towards it and you resolve that conflict. And then, after you make peace, you become And you cannot worship God in the conflict So, if you genuinely want to pursue the benefits of illumination that we've been discussing for the last two weeks, someone may need to go home today and take a break. Someone may need to go home today and sit down and write a very kindly, worthy email. Someone may need to ask for forgiveness. Someone may need to extend forgiveness. And this is a person some of you may need to let go of a grudge. And I know you hear the often for some, I cannot let go of that grudge, I will never let go of that grudge, but I don't need to grudge. Please remember, you do not hold a grudge, the grudge holds you. If you want to get past your past, you have to let go of your grudge. The grudge destroys the vessel. That is I you to the So I ask God to open my eyes. I come to face Him with a humble attitude. I cleanse my heart of sin and conscience. And then I begin to experience on a more frequent basis those awful moments that we talked about last week. Those moments that you're reading the verse of Moses and you want to say a hundred times. But suddenly it just comes to life in your heart and in your mind and it connects with you right where you are in your life and it offers you that guidance, that piece of that information that you so need. And that is our prayer. Uh, that you begin to experience frequent aha moments, frequent illumination in your study of God. Father, we thank you that you. Made sure that you 